Greetings once again vac fans. Today I want to go over airflow losses of central vacuum systems. Specifically, let's take a look at airflow losses using three different motors. The first one is just a plain old motor that you could put in a central vacuum system. And then the next two will actually be two different systems themselves by modern day, otherwise known as MD. All right, here's one I found online a couple years back, and I've been using this as a general example to show people that even though you have a large motor, and let's take a peek at this, look at this, 8.4 inch fan, that's incredible. And it has 142 CFM from its two inch opening. Okay, now that's from the motor, that's not from a hose or a power nozzle, and they have it calculated, according to ASTM F2105, 675 air watts. Now, unfortunately, I know this little table down here is pretty small, and on a phone it's going to look pretty bad. But I just want to go and point out real quick before I go and enlarge the table that you start out with 2 inches and you go down to a hose that has a 1 and an 8 inch opening, uh, on the inner diameter of the hose, you'll experience quite an airflow loss. Here's one in an, uh, one in an eighth inch opening, that's an inner diameter from a hose, and you see it drops to 106.3. All right, let's make this a little bit bigger so we can really see what's going on. Now, I hope you can see this on a, on a phone, and of course, if you've got a big monitor, this ought to appear relatively huge. So let's reemphasize Let's start at the standard two inch inner diameter opening of the motor. Remember, this is of the motor, right? The motor over here. And we're at about 142 CFM. Now that sounds pretty good. The problem is, after all your piping and then you hook up a hose and whatever else, typically it can go down to, I realize there's different size of uh, hose openings. You know, you can actually hook up to this thing. You can get ones that are a little bit larger, a little bit smaller, but right here, you're looking at 1.125, and this is an inner diameter, and you're down to 106.3 CFM. Now, realistically speaking, if you were looking to measure that at the end of a hose, that is, say, a 25-foot hose, it goes in through some kind of a wall outlet, whatever it is, you've got your 2-inch piping in there, you're going to have less than 106 let's just basically consider it as 100 CFM from the end of a hose with that kind of say one and an eighth inch um, inner diameter. All right and notice also that when you do that the air watts isn't 675 it goes down to 550. That's a little more usable number. All right let's go to the next one here. Let's actually take a look at a real machine rather than just a motor Let's take a look at a motor in a machine. So this particular uh, brand's modern day MD central vacuums, you can find them online. And here is um, one of their better, although it might not be the absolute best, uh, M715H, and it's a single motor. It's still big though. I mean, look at this right here, 8.4 inch. Let's see if we can go and make this a little bit bigger. Two stage 8.4 inch. Fan. I mean, that, that's big, right? And here's a sealed suction, right? At the actual canister itself, 150 inches. And here's the initial CFM, real close to the 142 of that LAM Amatec motor. It's rated at slightly higher air watts, 718, and about 15 amps to run this. Now, it doesn't include a power nozzle. So if you take 15 times 120, you come up with eh, around 1,800 watts. That's a lot of watts for 136 CFM out of a 2-inch orifice. That's the important thing, out of a 2-inch orifice. So please take a look at these specs and kind of just, you know, let your mind kind of uh, wrap around them. And let's move on to what this would translate to with a real hose and a real power nozzle. So you've got, say, a 25-foot hose, and I know you can get them in different lengths, 35-foot, 50-foot, whatever. You could probably even get them custom-made. But if the inner diameter here is a little over an inch, 
you're going to be down to probably about 100 CFM. Okay, that's quite a loss. We started at close to 140, and we're going to be down around 100. Now, when we plug into this um, power nozzle, uh, power nozzle, if I can say that right, vessel work, um, you're going to have a connection right up here. You're going to have a connection or seal right here. You're going to have one right there, down in here, and of course, you've got this bend right in there. And one way or another, this joint is going to be, at some point, probably at a 45 degree angle when you lean the wand back. Well, typically you get about a 20 CFM loss bringing, where my mouse go, bringing this down to about 80 CFM. So were you all aware that for a typical machine like that, that plugs into, well, I think this one was, let's see, if that one's 15 amps, you know what? You're gonna need a dedicated 20 amp circuit. The other LAM Amatec motor I was showing you, you could use a 15 amp circuit, but this one's going to be a dedicated 20 amp circuit. So anyway, with a dedicated 20 amp circuit, because it's certainly going to max out a 15 amp circuit, look at the amount of power. You know, this a range of power in here. It's going to depend on the power nozzle. It's going to depend on how much strain you put on the machine, so on and so forth. You could be looking at 18 or maybe even 1900 watts, and what you'll get in the end is 80 CFM out of this power nozzle at the end. That's, that's pretty much what I would predict following the trail of breadcrumbs. So what do you think of that? Can't wait to see the responses. Okay, let's move on to a big dude. And this guy has two three-stage bypass motors. Not just one, but two of them. And let's make this a little bigger. All right, so this monster with two motors Notice it's got a little less water lift because the way the motors are hooked up because it's trying to get a ton of CFM. 200 CFM, nearly 1,000 air watts. But you're talking almost 27 amps out of a 120 volt circuit. By the way, just as a side note, I looked at the 240 volt version. It's actually a little less efficient. The 120 volt uh, version is a little more efficient as far as, say, total power uh, used or required to get a certain amount of CFM. So this dude requires a dedicated 30 amp circuit. That's an absolute monster. And of course at 120 volts. At 240 volts obviously the current would be um, proportionally less. But 200 CFM and that's 200 CFM from well pick an intake. Okay that's from its, that's from its intake. So just to kind of highlight that two motors, you got a bunch of CFM, that's pretty high, ton of air watts, a lot of power required. So you figure this thing is going to have airflow like you wouldn't believe. But you know what? If you apply the same uh, ratio of airflow loss, so I took about 100 CFM out of the hose and then divided by 142, take that same ratio and that 200 CFM is going to drop. Now, it still is a lot. This is, look at this down here, 140 CFM is what I would predict from the inner diameter of this typical hose here. Now, it could be less. I mean, let's face it. If you wind the hose up, coil it like a snake like this, or you have a knot in it, or you've got any kind of a leak here or here or here, whatever it is, it's going to be less than this. So this is like theoretical perfection. 140 CFM, that's a lot. I'm not so sure you could get that much CFM through a nozzle opening that small, but let's say for the sake of argument that you can. Go along with the same 20 CFM loss from all things power nozzle here, and you're at 120 at this particular nozzle. That would be really fantastic. So my parents in Florida have a nozzle that's similar to this in their uh, S-series uh, Mila. And if I'm remembering right, this is about a 12 inch opening for the brush roll and it's pretty wide open. That would be tremendous amount of airflow and certainly this thing would become an unbelievable deep cleaner when you consider a medium pile flow through carpet. That would just be phenomenal. But look at the price you pay. Look at the elephant in the room. 
3,400 watts, roughly, you know, maybe plus or minus 50 or 100 watts, depending on how you roll everything together. That's something that's so much power uh, in the old days before, I guess, CFLs and LED lights, you would turn a vacuum like this on and the lights would dim. <laughs> that's a lot of power to get 120 CFM estimated at this nozzle. I would love to have that. It'd be a great deep cleaner, but I got a hard time spending, so to speak, electricity-wise, 3,400 watts or 3.4 kilowatts to get 120 CFM. I mean, that's that's a lot. It would be a monster machine, but ooh, I'd really have to like uh, central you know, vacuum systems a lot to hook up something that's that big. Now, I know somebody's done it somewhere. Um, and I would love them, you know, to post measurements or a video or something like that. But I want to show you, now that you've seen the airflow loss, I want you to be able to compare how much power you use, right, and what the result is that you get at your nozzle to something that is very, very old technology. That's right, a Kirby. Now, you could do the same thing, like, say, with a Eureka Sanitaire, or uh, what do we have, uh, a Royal, like say maybe one of their 10 amp dudes. Uh, and it's gonna be something similar to this. So with only 840 watts, that's seven amps at 120 volts, you can do and generate from this slightly larger than two inch diameter hole, 177 CFM. And by the way, the water lift on this machine, and, and this is, you see this little speed connector, right, uh, speed detector right here? Um, this, this switch can run either on low or high speed. And on low speed, you get 177. On high speed, uh, it's like 195, maybe 197. I mean, it's almost 200 CFM running on high speed. But when you have the power nozzle attached, it runs on low speeds here at 177. Notice how large this hole is right here. Well, guess what? Even though it's kind of a lousy picture of it, this is a very large hole here. The inner diameter is slightly over two inches. It's like two and a sixteenth of an inch. And the bottom line is this large diameter opening keeps the air flowing. Now you notice it still has a loss. It's got an excessive loss. Look at this. 177 drops 40 CFM down to 137. But there's a reason for it. See this little spindle? There's a belt that attaches to it and it has to run the brush roller. Also, the air comes out at this particular angle, or say comes in at this particular angle, but this is a 90 degree turn. This power nozzle literally has to turn the air 90 degrees, and let's face it, this brush roller right here also blocks some of the airflow. So bottom line, with 840 watts, you can get 137 nozzle CFM. And as you see in the background, this is my medium pile flow through Mohawk carpet that loves high CFM. If you're new to my channel, um, take a look at the, say, flower under the carpet or the carpet under the carpet or whatever it is, and you can see what high CFM can do when you have a flow through carpet. It does a great job of cleaning quickly and or deeply. Um, so thanks for watching. And stay tuned for more, and I can't wait to read the comments.